Hi, this is Rashid and you are watching Step by Step Robotics. So today I would like to show you this sky. This is the Adler small size autonomous drive mobile robot which is easily to integrate with an AI and make your robot's application come true. So everything you need is here. Let's get started. Okay, here we are. This is the CAD model of the Adler. So I will explain and do the hardware overview on here, which is quite easier to see things. So the Adler body is just only the two carbon plates, which connect together with these uh, simple aluminum pillars. So at the back of the Adler here, you will see this is the Makita battery, 18 volt, 6 amp hour and we designed this aluminum part to hold the battery together and there is a simple carbon plate up and down to let everything fix together in the body and next to the battery this is the gps pole and the we are using here three gps but of course if you have the here two or here plus you can use it as well and next to the GPS pole, this is the two-channel ESC motor driver, which is going to drive the left side and right side motor. So basically, we just use the two-channel of the PWM input from the ADU pilot or any receiver to drive the motors. Next to the ESC, you will see this is the 5 volt 10 amp DC-DC regulator for the Jetson Nano. So in case if you don't want to use the Jetson Nanos, but you want to use some things like the uh, Savia NX or the Intel Nuke, you can change this regulator to uh, 12 volt or 19 volt, just depends on what you want. So in front here, there is the two cameras. One is the D435 Intel Sense, which is going to give us the distance information. And the upper here, which is the T265, which can provide the odometry information. So in case we want to run the robot indoor and we cannot get the GPS information, so the T265 is the way to go. So under here, this is the Cube Mini Purple, which running on Adu Pilot software. So if you're interested in the autonomous drive vehicles, and the open source project, so this is the way you should go. And next, I will show you how to assemble the Adlers from scratch and do some tuning in the mission planners. And at the end, it will be some demonstration. And here we are, this is the Adler after finished assembly, but I still need to connect the motors to this ESC port and then I will tie this four screw to connect the upper plate and the bottom plate together and after we connect the battery to the battery holders, it will let it to go. Okay, now I'm connecting the Adler to my laptop and open up the mission planner. So first we go to the config page and click on full parameter list. The first parameter that we need to set is AHRS orientation to set the correct orientation of the Q-mini that plays on the Adler. So it was set as 8 for row 180 degrees. So if you want another orientation, you can change it as well. So the next parameter is RC7 option, which is for arm and disarm. 
So it depends on which uh, transmitter you are using. So in my case, I'm quite get used to with this channel. So the next parameter is the RC8 option for learn cruise. So when we are tuning this throttle speed controller, it will be useful for us. So we just set it as right now. So next parameter is the mode CH, which I set it as 5. So on my transmitter, on the channel 5, it is 3 bay switch. So I can use the whole and manual and auto mode in this switch. So if you have another switch that you want to use, you can set it as well. So next parameter is BRD safety enable. In our case, our GPS doesn't have the safety switch button. So we just disable it here. So, okay, so next parameter is related to our GPS because we are using here three and it support the UAV CAN. So we need to set CAN D1 protocol and CAN P1 driver as one. So next it is GPS type. We set it as nine for the UAV CAN. And the last one is the NTF LED types. For the LED indicator, we set it as 231. So that is the basic parameters that we need to set before doing everything like calibration and tuning. So next we need to do the mandatory hardware checkup like accelerometer calibration, compass, curb, the radios, the servos to check that everything working properly. But I already done that, so next I will do the tuning. So let's see how I tune these guys for the throttle and steering. And next we will do the waypoint demonstration. So this is the most time consuming process. So first we need to tune the throttle speed controller. If you remember that I set RC8 option as learn cruise which allow the rover to get speed data and matching it with the input throttle. And please remember that the cruise learning process should be done in manual mode. So after we got the baseline from cruise learning, we need to set parameter GCS PID marks as throttle or steering, depends on which do you want to tune. And on the data page, we need to open up tuning graph window, then check the box of PID design and PID achieve. From now, we will use acro mode to tune the PID of throttle and steering. So as you may know, PID tuning is kind of trial and error process. So you can try change the value of P and I, and mostly we keep D as default. For steering rate tuning, you should start with feed forward or FF value. So this is also kind of baseline for steering. After that, you just adjust the P and I to make it react as you want. So I highly recommend you to go check on a pilot documentation page because that is the best way you can follow it step by step and it was explained very well. And these are the final values of the PID steering and throttle from my tuning process. So I think it's pretty much ready to go test autonomous drive right now. Okay guys, so before we test the waypoint, I would like to show you something. I would like to set up the base station to use the RTK GPS. So here, I'm at the roof of my company building. So this is just a simple base station that I can do for just a test. So uh, this is the F9P GPS, so we can find it in the internet it has a many resource about how to set up the base station for the f9p so it will just give the data from this uart port the uart2 and it will goes into the xb and we and i have the another xb on my desktop and that xb will just inject the rtk rtcm correction into the mission planners and we can get more accurate result for the position 
Okay, I'm come back to the first floor again, and the Adler is waiting for me outside, ready to do some demonstration. And here you can see another XB that received the RTCM collection from the base station GPS, and it just connect to this long USB cable, and it connect to mine laptop here which is open up the mission panel right now so it will just inject the rtcm collection to the mission planners and we can get more accurate result to control the robot on the optional hardware menu rtk gps inject you will see i'm connecting to com19 port to get the rtcm collection message from my gps base station and on the data page, my GPS status is showing RTK float, which means we can get an accuracy around 10 to 20 centimeter, which sometimes is jumping around on the points, as you can see. So I did some simple experiment that if the GPS position is higher, like one or two meter from the ground, we can get easily the RTK fix, which means one centimeter accuracy. But anyway, this is not that bad for the small size robot and we can still do a demonstration. So I'm making a simple waypoint like this small rectangle course and I will switch to auto mode and it will just run by himself. You can see it's a little bit weaving and still some overshoot, but it can go in straight line and stop at the point. So we can try tuning it up a little bit to get a better performance, but it pretty much depends on which kind of application you want to apply to, but I think this is quite enough for just a demonstration. And that is the overview of the Atlas and some basic operation that this guy can do. So next, I would like to do something more interesting like some object detection and object avoidance and doing a slam by using the LiDAR. So there are a lot of things that I want to do with this guy. If you're interested in the Atlas, please go check out on my website stepbystep-robotics.com. So please stay tuned and thank you for watching.